Hello, this is Captain. Welcome back to Stormworks Basics Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to build a transmission for cars and light trucks. So let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to look at our parts. And so we have some gearboxes here. We have three different gearboxes. And one question that still people ask a lot is, are there any differences between the three gearboxes? And the answer is no. There used to be a difference where each gearbox had a certain amount of torque that it could handle before braking. Uh, the devs removed that. I think it was a good idea to remove that. It made some sense in the beginning, but the issue is this is this gives us more flexibility to build whatever we want by having gearboxes, for example, one by ones that will do the same as a five by five. So three gearboxes are the same. They all do the same thing. Uh, currently, the only difference is aesthetics. So let's look at the basics of the gearbox. There are a couple things we need to think about when we look at these gearboxes in game. So first thing we want to do is let's look at the arrow. As you can see, we have an arrow. We can flip these one way or the other. And so there are some ways to think about this. So one thing I'm going to do is I'll take a modular engine here, and I'll just put a clutch on here. And this will show you what direction the engine is coming from. So we'll actually just do... Very simply, we'll just show an engine. I'm not going to hook this engine up. It's just going to kind of be a placeholder to show you which direction the engine is. All right, so that is our engine. And if we look at the gearboxes, we have an arrow on the gearbox. And that is very important to understand what is going on. So you're doing two things with gearing. One, you're trading RPS, which is speed, for torque, which is power. So what this means is if the engine is turning many more times, it is creating a lot of torque. And in this case, we're going to be adding a wheel. So we'll put a wheel on there to demonstrate what we're actually turning because this is going to be a tutorial for cars and trucks. And so if we look at this, when the arrow is pointing away from the engine, what we're doing is we're trading the RPS of the engine and we're converting it into torque power. So RPS is speed, torque is power. When the arrow is pointing toward the engine, what we're doing is we're trading the torque of the engine for RPS. You don't get anything for free. You have to trade one for the other. And so, for example, if you wanted to keep trading away your torque from your engine to get more RPS speed, you're eventually you're going to need to add a bigger engine. I've talked about this in other tutorials where eventually if increasing the gear ratio where the arrow is pointing towards the engine causes you to go slower, it means you need more power in the form of a larger engine. These are the important things to know is the arrow pointing away from the engine, you're converting the RPS of the engine to torque. This is giving you more torque. This is good for trucks. And when you have the arrow pointing toward the engine, that is converting the torque of the engine, the power, into speed. All right. So that's one of the first things you need to know about these gearboxes. Second thing, let's go ahead and click on the gearbox. We have two ratios per box, only two ratios. We have an off ratio. That is the default ratio. If we do nothing to this gearbox, it will be this top ratio. So, for example, if you're going to run a boat, boats generally don't shift gears. So if your boat has, say, a 9-5 gear ratio on there, let's stick that in there, and you never plan on shifting because boats don't shift their gears, generally there might be a couple cases, but most boats, boats never shift gears. If you have a 9-5 gear ratio for your boat and you never plan on shifting it, you can just leave that in there and you never have to worry about swapping gears. You don't have to plug in the electricity. You don't have to do any of that. But we have two ratios, 9-5 on this, and then we have other ratios here. And we'll go through the ratios really quick. 1, negative 1, that's your reverse. So that will mean for one rotation of the engine, we're going to go negative 1 uh, at the wheel. So you need to consider it engine wheel. Now, this very much depends on which way the arrow is pointing. So again, if the arrow is pointing away from the engine, this is the default position for the gearbox. And so if we look at the numbers here, let's go to a real simple one, three to one. So what this means is for three rotations of the engine on the left side here, we get one rotation of the wheel. So when the arrow is pointing away, it is a three one. Now, if we look over here, when the arrow is pointing toward the engine, this is actually backwards. All right, so for every one rotation of the engine, we're getting three rotations of the wheel. We're trading away the power of the engine for more speed. So if this wheel, if the, the uh, circumference of this wheel is one meter, for every one rotation of the engine, we're going to go one meter forward. So for if this is one RPS, we're going to go one meter per second if the circumference is one meter. All right, so that's important to know. So we have two ratios here. If we look here, we have a gear switch. This will allow us to switch from that first ratio to the second ratio. That's what we need to do there. We also have electricity. We need to plug in the electricity if we want to switch this gearbox. Again, the example I talked about, 
If you have a boat and you're just using a 9.5 and you do not need to uh, ever shift your gearbox, you don't need to plug it in to the on off and you do not need to plug in the electricity if you never plan on shifting it. With our transmission here, we're going to end up shifting, so we're going to need to. All right, so the next thing you need to know about these gearboxes is stacking the gearbox. So as you can see, I've lined up three of them pointing away from the engine. This is going to give us a lot more torque, again, because they're pointing away from the, the engine. Our wheel is going to move slower, but it's going to be more powerful, allowing us to move bigger loads like, say, a truck. What you need to understand is how do I stack my gearboxes and how do I multiply them? This is a big mistake I see a lot of new players do, is they will add the fractions. So these are essentially fractions. That's 1 divided by 1 is 1. That's a 1 to 1. All right, this is 6 divided by 5. We can do the math really quick here. 6 divided by 5, that's 1.2 to 1. So 1 point two turns of the engine for one turn of the wheel. That's a three, two, three divided by two is a 1.5. As you can see, they're stepping up a little bit. They're stepping up incrementally. Nine divided by five, that's a 1.8. As you can see, they're going up a little bit each time. Here's a two, one. Two divided by one is a two, of course. Uh, five divided by two is 2.5. 3 divided by 1, 3 divided by 1 is a 3 to 1, of course. And so we have these gearbox here. So let's just do real simple math here. 3 to 1, 3 to 1, 3 to 1. So we, remember, we do not add our fractions. These are fractions. We do not add them. We multiply our fractions. So this is a 3, 3, 3. So this would be 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. So this is a 27 to 1 gear ratio. So what this means is for every 27 rotations of the engine, we're going to get one rotation of the wheel. So we need to understand that first to understand how a transmission is going to work. You multiply your fractions, you do not add them. So a little bit more complicated one here is 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 5 is 45, 45 divided by 2 will be 22.5 to 1 gear ratio. All right, good. So we understand that we have to multiply these. Now, we also have to understand that if we have them like this, we're still multiplying them. And so we can understand this really quickly. Let's go 6, 5, 6, 5. And this one's pointing this way. So this would actually be a 5, 6. So what that would be is a 30 over 30, which is a 1 over 1. So these cancel each other out. So you'll see people do this sometimes where they're just, you know, trying to kind of pull numbers out of their hat. It's better to, them, to do the actual uh, math on these, but you still multiply them out. So let's go ahead, and I have a chart. It's an, a uh, Google Sheets chart that helps you do this where you can set up your gear ratios, and I'll go ahead and show you that now. All right, so here's a Google Sheets chart, and I made this up here, and this will allow you to use four gearboxes and put in all the different ratios. And again, like I said before, this is just simple multiplying fractions. So here, this gearbox is pointing away from the engine, so it's going to be three rotations of the engine for every one rotation of the wheel in this case. All right, and again, let's say gearbox two, we wanted to do a three to one. As you can see over here, it's starting to multiply them. So it's multiplying three times three, that's nine. So it'd be three times three times one times one is nine. One times one times one times one is one. That's a nine over one. The reduced ratio is the same, nine to one. If we went did something a little bit more complicated here, let's do a five two. As you can see, that's a 15 to 2 or a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio. So with using this chart, it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to do the math yourself. As you can see, this one's pointing away, away, away. Let's make one towards. So this would be pointing towards. Now, you still have to do this manually. Unfortunately, I can't do it because of limitations of sheets. But let's say you go in here and you do a 3 to 1. Now, remember, when the arrow is pointing toward the engine, the fraction is going to be flipped. So a 3 to 1 now becomes a 1 to 3. One rotation of the engine gives you three rotations of the wheel. Okay. So now, as you can see, it's doing this uh, multiplication for me. I don't have to pull up my calculator or do anything else. It's a 15 over 6, which reduces down to a 2.5 to 1 gear ratio. Okay, good. So we have that all set up. So let's do the first step we should do when we try to build a transmission for a car or truck. And that is, instead of trying to imagine the numbers ourselves or guess or spend a ton of time just trying to test things out, Let's look at some real cars. That is one of the easiest things you can do. The math is still math. It doesn't change because it's in a game. There are a little bit of differences. For example, the wheels tend to be a little bit bigger in game than they are in real life, so that will change some things. But the numbers are still pretty close, and the distances between the different gear ratios are still very applicable because, again, it's simple math. And so let's go ahead and let's look at some real gear ratios for some real cars. 
All right, so Ford is pretty good at posting these user manuals for the cars. And in these user manuals, it will show some gear ratios. And so right here, there's a 2017 Ford Fiesta. Ford Fiesta, very small car. You know, I've driven them before. They're very tiny. And so one thing you'll notice is because the car is small and light, it has a small motor, but it doesn't need a lot of torque. It doesn't need a really low gear ratio because it's a tiny little car. It's not hauling a lot. It's not like a big truck. Big trucks will have like a 15 to 1 gear ratio in first gear. So about a 3.8 to 1 gear ratio. Second gear is a 2 to 1. Third gear is a 1.28, a 0 0.95, 0 0.75 to one in fifth gear. All right, so these are our ratios. So we don't have to try to figure these out on our own. We can go online and we can figure these out. All right, so the next website here, this is the Ford F-150 hub. So this is a light pickup truck. So if we look here, we have a bunch of different transmissions here. We have four speed auto, five speed auto. We have some manual transmission here. Here's a five speed manual. Again, you know, some people think a pickup truck is a big old truck. It's really not, you know, I've driven tractor trailers before. A pickup truck is essentially just a car with, you know, some badging on it. You start to get into some things like the F-550s. Those tend to be actual real trucks. These are pretty small trucks. And so, again, as you can see, the gear ratios really aren't that much different than that Ford Fiesta. The engine is more powerful. That's the only difference. So the ratios stay pretty similar, but the engine is just more powerful. So, like, if we look at this six-speed auto here, we have a 4.17, a 2.34, 1.52, a 1.1, a 0.87, and a 0.69. All right, we look down here. We have some manuals here, 3, 9, 2, 2, 5, 1, 4, 9, 1, and a 0.8. And then these are your reverse gears here. So reverse gears, you'll notice reverse is pretty close to first, and the reason is pretty simple, right? An object at rest wants to stay at rest. An object in motion wants to stay in motion. So a truck or a car, when it's stopped, it needs a lot of torque power in order to get moving. And so that doesn't matter whether you're trying to go forward or in reverse. And so forward and reverse, uh, first gear and reverse tend to be very low because that helps you get that heavy mass moving that is now stopped and doesn't want to move. As you start to go, as you start to move the vehicle, it is easier. The object in motion wants to stay in motion. It's easier for you to stay there. So what you're doing is you're effectively trading away your torque for more speed. So you're giving up power because you don't need it anymore and you're trading it for speed. All right. So that's why it's very challenging to start in a high gear. You just don't have the torque in order to get the vehicle moving. All right, so we're going to use some of these numbers, and now we don't have to make them up ourselves. We can start with that number. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do two facing away and two facing towards. Now, sometimes you need to change these around, but this is a, a pretty good start here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make these all pretty much one-to-one, one-to-ones. And as you can see, those are all one-to-one, one-to-ones. And we'll start with this basis. And then we're going to go into the chart. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that information from the Internet. We're going to use real-life gear ratios. And we're going to plug them into our chart. And we're going to use the numbers from in-game to get our gear ratios as close as possible to the real life, which we know works. All right, so now looking back at this gear chart, which this will be uh, linked in the description, this chart here. And so if you look right here, we have what's called desired ratio. What this is is a... This is just a place for you to be able to put in the ratios that you found online or wherever you found them. So in this, I'm going to use the Ford Fiesta manual. This is a 3.84 to 1 gear ratio. All right. That's our first gear for the Ford Fiesta. Second one is a 2.03. So 2.03 to 1 gear ratio. Next one is going to be a 1.28. Again, I'm just looking at that chart that I already showed you guys. This is a 0 0.95, 0.95 to 1. And we're only going to make a 5-speed. We don't need to make a 6-speed here. And so this is going to be 0.75 to 1. And we will just leave this one blank. 6 gear, we do not need. We'll just leave it blank. All right. So this, these are the gears that we want to achieve. All right. And so what I'll do is I'll turn these back to 1-1s. One and we'll start fresh. So as you can see, this is going to multiply them out. We're 1-1. One one. So we want to get a 3.84. All right. Now, we again, we need to understand that each one of these boxes only has two gears. OK, and so what we're going to do here is this one's away. Remember, the first two, we'll go back to the game real quick. First two are away, away. The arrow is pointing away from the engine, then it's towards, towards. All right. So away, away, towards, towards. So I put a little box here. This is just to remind you which direction they're putting. You still have to manually enter this in yourself. 
but this will tell you, this will remind you. So away, away, towards, towards. So that is the way we have it in game. That's, we're going to set it up in the chart. All right, so now we want to achieve a 3.84. All right, so let's go ahead and let's put something here. So 3 to 1. So 3 to 1, that's a little bit lower than, or a little bit higher of a gear than we'd like. So we want to get it down to 3.8. All right, so now Gearbox 2, what we could do is we could do a 6.5. All right, there's a 3.6. Let's go up even higher than that, right? So the next one is a 3.2. All right, 4.5. So that is too high. That's fine. Because what we're going to do next is this gearbox here, our gearbox 3, this is going to be our reverse. So we're going to go REV for reverse. All right, so that's going to tell us this one's going to be our reverse. I usually just do it on 3. Uh, that's just common practice for me. You can put it wherever you want, but I usually put it on the third gearbox. And so each of these is going to have two ratios we can use. We can use two ratios. This one also has two ratios, but we know that one of them is reserved for reverse. And so because of that, what we're going to do is all of these need to be the same because the other ratio is reverse. All right. So this one is pointing toward the engine. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to do a 6.5. We need that to come down. So I'll explain why I'm doing it. As you can see here, 4.5 is larger than that. So we need to reduce the gear ratio. So this is pointing towards. This is The ones pointing away from the engine are making the number bigger. The ones pointing toward the engine are making this number smaller. Okay. And so we're at 4.5. We need to get down to a 3.84 or as close as we can. So what we're going to do here is a 5.6. Remember, when it's pointing toward the engine, the number is flipped. There's a 3.75 to 1. Bingo, that's pretty close. That's a, probably the closest we're going to be able to get it. But that's really close. That's point, you know, uh, what is that, point oh nine something like that, away. So that's pretty, pretty damn close there. All right, so next one we want is a 2.03. All right, so let's look at this again here. And let's go, let's try a 3-1, a 3-2. All right, there's a 4-5. Then we, this one always, need, now remember, because this is our reverse, all of these need to be 6-5. So let's just go ahead and we'll fill these all out to 6-5, okay? And so that will save us any uh, problem with screwing this up and forgetting to do it. These will all be 6-5 because it's pointing away from the engine. All right. So we already have some in there now. So if we look there, we're at a 375. That makes sense. It's the same as here. We want to reduce it some more. Okay, so we can do gearbox 4. Now remember, gearbox 4 is pointing toward the engine. Let's try a 3 up. Remember, it has to be upside down. So 3, 2. 2.5. Let's go higher than that. So that will be a 9, 5 is our next ratio. There we go. 2.083 to 1. So that's pretty close to where we want to be here. That's within 0 0.05 of the real gear ratio of the real car. As you can see, we'd have to do all this math ourselves. The chart makes it easy. Next one here we need to get to is a 1.28. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so if we look here, we're already at a 0.83. So instead of going back to a 3 to 1, we won't bother. We'll leave this as a 1 to 1 for now. All right, the next ratio here we're going to have to figure out as you can see, so by default, this is at a 0.83. We need to have this come up. So these two boxes here raise the ratio. These two will lower it. So we need to raise the ratio. So we're going to go here, and we'll throw in a 3.2 just to see what it does. 1.25, look at that, right in the money. That's within 0 0.03 of the ratio we want. Excellent. All right, next one we're going to do is fourth gear here. So as you can see, this is already pretty close. This one needs to come up. This one needs to come down. All right, so what we'll do here is, remember, we have two ratios here. So we need to see what we want to use here. So this one needs to come up a little bit. So let's try a 6.5. There's a 1 to 1. Perfect. We're done. All right, that is right where we want to be. Excellent. That is beautiful. All right, so what we're going to do here is this one needs to come down, okay? So to come down on this one, as you can see, we used a 5.9 here, so this is 1.1. One, one. Let's try the 5.9, see what it does. That is too low, okay? So let's come over here, and let's try the 6.5. All right, that's still too low, so let's try the 3.2. 
Beautiful. All right, so we are now done with our transmission. You'll see how quick and easy that is. Understanding that the ones pointing away from the engine are lowering your gear ratio. Now, I know these terms are going to be a little bit confusing. A low gear ratio means that you have a lot of torque, little speed. A high gear ratio means you have little torque, a lot of speed. And so the numbers, when I say a low gear ratio, the bigger the number, the lower the ratio. The smaller the number, the higher the ratio. All right, so that's uh, that's important to know. But look at how close we get to these ratios using the numbers we have in game. The chart makes it very easy and quick to do. These two pointing away from the engine, they will lower your gear ratio, giving you a bigger number. These two pointing toward the engine, they will... Uh, put you in a higher gear ratio, making your number smaller. All right. And remember, each one of these can only have two numbers. So let's do a quick check, make sure we're only using two numbers. We are 3 1 in gearbox 1 and 1 1. These are two numbers in gearbox 1. 3 1 1 1. 3 2 6 5. This one here, because this one is our reverse, we have to put 5 6 all the way through. This one here, it's pointing towards. This one is 1-1 one, one and 5-9. As you can see, we only use 1-1 one, one and 5-9. Beautiful. So we didn't break any rules. We didn't go over the two ratios we're allowed with our boxes in game. And as you can see, we're very close to each of the ratios. These are very, very close. All right. As you can see, all of these ratios are very close. This one's within 0 0.06 of the real ratio. This one is within 0 0.05 of the real ratio, 0 0.03. This one is 0 0.05 of the real ratio, and this one is about 0 0.09 of the real ratio. So these are all very close, and we're good to go here. All right, so next thing we want to do, we want to get this set up, and we're going to start building the microcontroller for the transmission. And so to do this, what we want to do here is we want to look, and we want to see which number is most frequent. Now, this one here, all of this, we don't have to look at this because, remember, we're not going up to six gear. So if we go ahead and we look at this here, we could if we wanted, but we don't have to. Um, if we go ahead and we look here, we're going to look, what is our most frequent number? So, again, we're ignoring this here. So, we look, we have 3-1 comes up twice, and 1-1 one, one comes up three times. So, 1-1 one, one is going to be our off position. 3-1 is going to be our on position. So, what we're going to do is we're going to next put up here is when we want to trigger these. So, this is just where I usually put it is up here. So, I want to trigger this one here and this one here. So I want to trigger uh, gearbox one on first and second gear. So I want to trigger it on one comma two. So those are the two times that I want to trigger this. Now uh, we'll end up doing it on reverse as well, but we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so here, when do I want to trigger gearbox two? So let's see, which one's most frequent? Three two happens every time except here. So the only time I want to trigger this gearbox that I want to switch it over to the other ratio is on fourth gear. So up here, we're going to put fourth. Next, we're going to go here. Now, this one only will trigger for reverse. I don't know why this one formatted weird. It did. All right. So this one only triggers for reverse. Now, when does this one trigger? We count this. We have 1-1 one, one comes up three times. So that's going to be our default position. And 5-9 is going to be our on position. So that's in second gear. And that's in fifth gear. So we're going to put 2, 5, 2, 5. Five. All right, so good. So we know that in order to get into first gear, we need to we need to trigger um, this gearbox on first gear. So this gearbox gets triggered on one and two. This one gets triggered on fourth gear. This one gets triggered on reverse. This one, two, five. So let's go ahead and let's make a microcontroller for a transmission. All right, so I have a blank microcontroller here, and I'm going to go ahead and we'll click on it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and name this. So this is my five-speed tutorial transmission. All right, and so this one's good for a small car. We can put that too, small car, okay? Uh, you know, like I showed you, the Ford Fiesta is not that much different than the F-150, the difference being the F-150 is much bigger, more powerful engine. So even though the gear ratios are very similar, the engine is more powerful, and so it can move that heavier truck even though it is still a small transmission. The next thing we want to do is we want to go to the logic here, and we want to start adding some nodes. So... What I'm going to do is we're going to make a manual transmission. You can easily make this automatic later, but I prefer manuals. We're going to work with start with a manual. I recommend starting learning how to use a manual transmission. The reason is this. If you understand a manual transmission, you understand why you're shifting gears, when you're shifting gears, then it makes it easy for you to trans 
to make your microcontroller for an automatic because you understand why you're shifting gears, okay? So our input here is going to be from our seat. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start adding some nodes here. So we have, in this case, four gearboxes. So we're going to go ahead and make the microcontroller a little bit bigger, and we'll add four gearboxes. So this will be G1 for gear 1. This will be G2 for gear 2. This will be G3 for gear 3. Make these outputs so they, remember, they're going to flip the gearboxes. So this is G3. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go like this, reverse. So this is my reverse gear. And this is going to be gearbox 4. So we'll go uh, output G4. We'll end up making this bigger later. But uh, this is going to be the introduction to show you how to make this transmission microcontroller. And then later we'll go through some other stuff to work on cars. But let's go ahead and let's go into the microcontroller. So the next thing we're going to do is then we're going to organize these. And this will be G1, 2, 3, and G4. Okay, good. So there are our gears. Now, next thing I'm going to do, let's go ahead and put the seats. So we'll update the microcontroller. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, we'll build a quick base for this so this can sit, and we'll put a seat. So let's go to up, down, and we're going to do this gear shift. Okay, and we're going to go reset 100%. Now what this does is I'll show you with a dial. Dial is a good way to test things. When you make it reset 100%, I'll show you the default behavior first. So if we go here to up, down, before I change this, it was at 10%. So it was at reset 10%. All right, let's go ahead and plug the up down into the dial, which I forgot to place. There we go. Let's plug this up down into the dial and spawn it. And let's look at what this does. I'm pressing the up arrow. All right, as you can see, it slowly goes up to one. All right, now I'm going to let go and it will go back to zero. Now I'm going to press the down arrow and it's going to slowly go down to negative one. So the range is negative one to one middle position being zero. Okay, let's quickly switch this over to what we want, which is we want to reset 100%. All right, so if we go in here and we press the up arrow, instantly it goes to one, let go, goes to zero, instantly goes to negative one. So what it does is it turns the up uh, button into a switch and it turns the down arrow into a switch. And when we let go of it, it goes back to zero. And this is how we're going to make our gear switches. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll go in here. And we'll start building this microcontroller. So we're going to start with our seat. And what we're going to do here is we're going to read a number. And this number is going to be 4. All right, so if you ever have doubt of what the numbers are, come out here, go to Composite. Look at the seat. As you can see, it will tell you what it is. So it is uh, 80 is 1, WS is 2, 3 is left, right, 4 is up, down. So that's where I got that from. We'll plug this into the microcontroller. And we'll go back in the microcontroller. All right, so that's four. So that's where I got four from. All right, next thing I'm going to do. Now, remember, one is going to be the up arrow. So up arrow is going to be to upshift into a higher gear. Down is going to be to downshift into a lower gear. We're going to make essentially a sequential gear shift. Now, some people say, oh, you know, you can't shift to whatever gear you want. There are very few opportunities, especially in trucks, where you're going to be able to skip gears. You're generally going to go sequentially to your gears. Uh, you're not supposed to be freewheeling either. A lot of people will freewheel. They'll they'll stop their car at a stoplight in fourth gear. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to always shift down from fourth to third to third to second, second to first. You're not supposed to freewheel. That is not proper procedure. And if you do it in a truck, you're going to crash your truck. You have to shift the truck down. So let's go ahead. And next thing we want to do here is we're going to do a uh, threshold gate here. So we do threshold. So when we press the up arrow, it's going to go 1. So we do 1-1, one, one, and that's going to trigger this when we want to count up our gear. Next, we're going to do Control-C-V, and we're going to make this negative 1, negative 1. So when we press the down arrow, it's going to read negative 1. I showed you on the dial. That's what it does. Okay, good. So that part is done. Next thing we do is an up-down counter. So the increment is going to be 1. So we're going to count out how many gears we have, and each time we click the up, it's going to count up one gear. Every time we click down, it's going to count down one gear. Pretty simple. We're going to leave the reset value at zero. That's going to be our neutral. Next, we're going to enable the clamp. And we're going to put our minimum value in. Now, it's not going to be zero. It's going to be negative one. And that's going to be for reverse. Reverse is going to be negative one. So you're going to go, you're going to start in neutral. If you want to go in reverse, you're going to click the down arrow. It's going to put it in negative 1, which is going to make you go in reverse. You click it up once, it goes to neutral. 
Click it up again, you're in first, second, third, fourth, and in this case, fifth. All right, so that's gonna go like that. So what we wanna do here is next thing we need to do is add a pulse. Now, if you press the up arrow and you held the up arrow, it would go one, two, three, four, five, and you would be in fifth gear. You don't want that. You wanna click on the up arrow, and you wanna be able to hold that up arrow, and it will not shift till the next gear until you let go and press it again. So that's what a pulse does. So let's go ahead and we'll put a pulse in there, pulse. All right, and so what we'll go ahead and do is we'll plug our one into the pulse. We'll copy this pulse, control C, V, and we'll put our negative one into the pulse. The one goes to the up, the negative one goes to the down. This is our simple counter. So reverse is negative one. In this transmission, we have five gears. We just made the five gears, so there's five. All right, and that's the start of that. So that's gonna count our gears. As we go up and down, it's gonna count that through. So let's play with this really quick. Let's go up on this. We'll do logic, add a node. We'll go number, output, okay? And this is our gear indicator, all right? So this will show us what gear we're in. Now, you know, some people need this, some people like this. This is how you would do it. I don't really like it myself, but this is up to you guys. So you put your gear indicator there, update that. And we'll go ahead and we'll plug our gear indicator in. So here's our gear indicator. We're going to hook that to the dial now instead. And let's go ahead and see if this is working. So we're sitting in our seat. We start at zero. I press the up arrow and I hold it. All right. So notice if I didn't put the pulse in, I'm presently holding the up arrow. It would go one, two, three, four, five. And it would count all the way through the gears. We don't want that. I'm going to let go of the up arrow. It's going to stay at one. I'm going to press it again. And I'm going to hold it. Two. I'm going to let go. I'm going to tap it. Three, tap it again, four, five. All right, we're all the way up. Now I'm going to go four, three, two, one, zero. And I'm going to press it one more time, and we're in reverse. So this is a simple counter that will allow you to be able to uh, count through your gears using the up-down arrows. All right, so let's go ahead, and we'll go back in. So as you can see, that works. So I highly recommend use a dial. This will help you visualize how things are working in-game. All right, good. So the gear indicator is in there. All right, so the next thing we here we're going to do is we're going to set up some thresholds, and we're going to set these thresholds up for the different speeds we put here on our gearbox. So first one we're going to do here is reverse. So that's negative one, negative one. Next one is going to be neutral. Now, we need to know neutral, and the reason is this. Again, a lot of people are never going to drive a manual car, which I think is a shame, but when you start... When you stop at a stoplight in a manual car, you need to push the clutch pedal in, which will make your clutch in-game zero. And the reason is simple. Your engine needs to turn in order to maintain compression and keep running. In-game, this is simulated by needing to be above 2 RPS. If you stop at a stoplight in-game and the brakes are on on the wheels and you do not push the clutch in, and turn it to zero, what's going to happen is the brakes from the tires are going to stop the engine, and the engine's going to stall. This happens in real life. You'll see people stall uh, coming off of stoplights or stall stopping. That means they forgot to put the clutch in, or they didn't take the you know put the clutch in enough. And so we need to tell the clutch to go to zero when we're in neutral or when we're stopped. The auto clutch will do that for us. But let's go ahead and finish the rest of these. So we'll do Control C V, make this one one. Okay, and we have a five speed, so it's going to be five forward gear, so we need four more of these. Paste, 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 and paste, and we'll start numbering these. This will be two, two, three, three, four, four, and this will be five, five. So as we go up our, in our up-down counter here, or we go down in our down counter, this will tell us what gears we need to shift in order to get these correct ratios. All right, so those are all our thresholds. Negative one for reverse, zero for neutral, one through five for our forward gears. Okay, good. Next thing I'm gonna do is Boolean here. Now you can use ORs. I recommend just doing the Booleans and the reason is this. Often many of us will take our microcontrollers and we'll put them on a different vehicle and we'll just tweak them a little. So instead of completely redoing them, we'll tweak them a little bit. And so if you wanna turn this into an eight speed or an 18 speed transmission, you can start with this already partly done. And by using these Booleans, it allows you to have more spaces. An OR only has two nodes. This Boolean has four. You have another Boolean over here, as you can see, which has many more. So we're gonna use these Booleans. We'll have a bunch of empty nodes, but this will allow us to then configure our gearboxes differently for different vehicles. So we're gonna go in here and we'll go to operators. As you can see, we have an OR and we have X, 
y, z, and w. So what we'll do here is we'll do x or y or z or w. And so if any of these are selected, it will go out with this because it's an or. All right, good. So that is our first Boolean. All right, now what we want to do is we want to go back and we want to look at our chart. All right, so if we look at our chart, we already did this, right? We said that 1-1 one, one is, is the most popular option. It's done three times. And so that's going to be our off position. So what we're doing is we're trying to figure out when do we turn these on. So we already did this. 3-1 is turned on on first and second. So first gear and second gear, we turn on gearbox 1. All right, so here's gearbox 1. We'll plug the Boolean in gearbox 1. And as we saw with the chart, first and second. And the reason I'll tell you in a second why I'm leaving this open. It, that's for the reverse. We'll do reverse later. So we're going to leave that one open. Okay. So that's gearbox one is done. So we'll copy this Boolean, control CV. Now we need to do gearbox two. So let's go back to chart. All right. So look in here. The only time we trigger gearbox two is we trigger it on four. So right down here, fourth gear. So three, two is going to be our off position. Six, five is our on position. We trigger that on uh, gear four. So we're going to come over here to gear four. And I'm going to put that on the Boolean. And that goes to gear two. Now, gear three, remember, we only trigger gear three on reverse. So gear three is going to be triggered on reverse. Pretty simple there. Next thing we need to do is gearbox four. So we'll copy this Boolean, control C, V. And again, the reason I said these are empty is if I need to switch this gearbox up, if I want to change my ratios, if I want to make it a truck, if I want to add more gears, this gives me flexibility. I don't have to delete all this and redo it. I can just replug stuff in. All right, so let's go look back at the chart. Gearbox 4 here is triggered on 2 and 5. So 2 and 5 are triggered there. So we'll go over here to 2 and 5. And that is going into gearbox four. So our transmission is almost done. Now, remember, I said I left the space for reverse. We need to figure out reverse. Now, remember, object at rest wants to stay at rest. We need a lot of torque, a lot of power in order to be able to get our vehicle moving. But once it's moving, we require less power. So we need to make sure that our reverse gear is pretty close to our first gear. So let's go ahead and we want to figure out how to set up our reverse gear. So it's going to be a little bit different because, remember, this is going to be a one-to-one. -one. So reverse is going to be even lower than first, which actually you'll often find. In that Ford Fiesta that I was showing you guys, reverse is a 4.07 to 1. First gear is a 3.84 to 1. So reverse is even lower IRL as well. So what we need is we need the same gears here as in first gear as we have in reverse. So what we need to do is it's pretty simple here. The only thing that's changing is this is our default gear. This is our default gear. This is our default gear. The only one that changes is first. So all we need to do is hook up uh, the reverse to this first gearbox here to make it a 3-1. That's it. All right, so here we go. And all we're going to do is take the negative 1 and bingo, plug it in right there, and that is it. So as you can see, we're all plugged in. So reverse is going to be even lower than first by a little bit like it is in real life. So reverse is our lowest gear. Now you notice this one's not connected. That's fine. This is going to go out to our engine microcontroller. This will tell our clutch to go to zero when we are in neutral. That way you can rev in neutral and it's not going to move the wheels like it should. Yet now some people say, hey, you didn't connect this one up. One of these is going to be the default position. Remember, we're only switching gearboxes when we need to get the gear ratios right. There's always going to be one gear ratio that is the default position. We don't have to turn the gearboxes on and off. Now, you could delete this. I never do, and the reason is this. If you need to go back and tweak your gears, let's say that your car is heavier than you thought it was going to be, and you need to go even lower on the gears, this one might change. Second might be default third might uh, now have to be connected. So I leave it. One of these is always going to be doing nothing because that's the default gear. So let's go ahead and look at third gear here. So here's third. As you can see, third is default position, default position, default position, default position. We don't need to switch anything. So third gear should be disconnected, and it is. So we're all set. All right, so the next thing we do is we're going to hook them all up. So G1, G2, G3, and G4. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to put in the appropriate numbers here. So what we want to do is we want to look at that chart. All right, so looking here, as you can see, we only use 3, 1 twice. We use 1, 1, 3 times. So it's going to be 1, 1, 3, 1 for gearbox 1. 
So it's going to be 1-1, one, 3-1. One, one. Gearbox 2, the default position is going to be 3-2, three, 6-5. Two, 3-2, six, 6-5. Three, six, now this one is going to be 6-5, 1, negative 1 for reverse. So 6-5, 1, negative 1 for reverse. And the last gearbox here, as you can see, it's going to be 1-1, one, 9-5. One, so 1-1, one, 9-5. One, so those are all plugged in. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to hook this up to our engine controller, and this will tell our engine when we're in neutral. So what we want to do here is we want to go to a uh, right on off, pretty simple there, and we want to plug this into the right on off when we're in neutral, and this will be sent out to our engine. So we'll add a node via composite output, and I'll go here, and this one will go out to engine. So we'll go to logic, and this will go to engine micro, and that will be an output. And so this will get plugged up there, and this will tell our clutch when we are in neutral. All right, so the next thing we want to do here is we want to integrate in an auto clutch system here. Now, this can either go in the engine microcontroller or this can go in the transmission microcontroller. So this is my PAT car chassis here. So if we look here, it is the PAT uh, chassis that is on the workshop. So you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, this has engine and transmission all connected together here. As you see, there's the tra this is the engine, and here is the transmission. And so what we want to do here is let's go ahead and let's look at the engine microcontroller here. Again, you could go on there and you could take this engine microcontroller if you would want. I have a bunch of microcontroller tutorials. And what we want to do is we want to look at the auto clutch. So if you follow some of those tutorials, you can see how to do an auto clutch. All right, so let's quickly go through the auto clutch here. And so if we look at our clutch, we have an up-down counter. Now, these numbers change. You can't just take any of these components and put them on any vehicle, depending on the size of the vehicle, how you're revving the engine, if the engine is overpowered or underpowered. You're going to need different numbers. So you have your increment here. Your increment is how slowly or quickly the clutch goes in or out. This auto feathers. Feathering is when you put the clutch in and out to allow some of the engine power to go through and reserve some to make sure that you remain above 2 RPS. So we have our increment here. For this particular car, I have 0 0.005. Every different vehicle is going to be different. If you notice that the clutch is uh, going in too quickly and stalling your vehicle, you need a, a smaller increment. If you notice the clutch is going in too slowly and you have ample power, then you're going to need a bigger increment. So this will have to be adjusted. Your reset value is going to be zero. Zero is your clutch all the way in, as if you put your foot on the clutch pedal. That's going to detach your engine from your transmission, which is going to allow you to stop and not stall. Uh, clamp is enabled, zero to one. All right, so what triggers the, the up on this? So there's two conditions when you want the clutch to go in. One, you want the RPS of your engine to have enough torque, enough power to be able to get you moving. So what we have here is we have a greater than. So if your RPS is greater than, and then you want to set a property number here. This will change. I make all my microcontrollers like this configurable. Again, depending on the application you have. For example, if you have a big truck, you're going to need a lot of torque to get a lot of weight moving. This is how it works in real life. For example, I drive tractor trailer. If I have an empty trailer, I don't need a lot of power because the trailer itself is very light. So I might be able to rev up to say 4 RPS and move no problem. If I have a very heavy trailer, I might need to rev up to 8 RPS. So you're going to want to set that uh, up here accordingly. So if you start stalling all the time, you want to increase this number. If you're uh, if you're not stalling, you can decrease that number. So our RPS, if it is greater than four, and so that is our first condition. Are we making enough torque? Is our RPS greater than four? And if our in this case we're using the WS key. WS is two from our seat. If our seat is greater than, in this case, zero. So that means if we're asking to go forward. So if we're pressing the W key, i.e. if the W key is pressed, that would be greater than zero. And if the RPS is greater than four, that's going to increase our clutch pressure. Now, when do we want to decrease that cl clutch pressure? When it is not. So when for example, when our RPS goes below 4 and we're getting ready to stall, we want to start to reduce the clutch. That will prevent us from stalling. That's called feathering the clutch. You're going to take some of the, some of the power away from the wheels, and you're going to give it back to the engine. 
So we just, at the end of the end here, we put a knot, and then we're going to go in, we're going to hook that up to the down counter. Now, the part that concerns us right now is the reset. So at the bottom here, is, you'll notice there's a reset, and we reset to zero. Zero is putting the clutch all the way in. So there are a couple conditions when we want the clutch all the way in. One, right? So the first condition when we want the clutch all the way in, when we want a zero on the clutch, is when we're starting. We do not want the wheels connected to the engine when we're starting the engine. So right here is our starter, and this is our first condition. So when we're starting, we want to zero the clutch. All right, the next condition is when our RPS is less than a set value. So in this case, I have it set to three. When we go below three RPS, we no longer have enough power to be able to run both the engine and the wheels. So when we go below three RPS, when we're gonna stall, we want to also trigger the zero. The last one here is coming from the transmission. When we are in neutral, we want to trigger that reset. So this is how you would integrate the transmission into the engine microcontroller to make sure that all that works. So all you're really gonna do here is you're gonna pass through your zero and you're gonna send it to this clutch. So let's go ahead and take a look at the transmission again. All right, so what we're gonna to wanna to do here is we're gonna to go to right on off, and we're gonna to wanna to take the zero for our neutral. We're gonna go out. If you notice from that microcontroller, it was channel 25. So we go channel 25, and then we would just add a logic node here. This logic node is going to be a composite output. We can go to engine, and that's gonna to go to our engine microcontroller. We'll go ahead, we'll plug that in. And so you would connect this node to the engine microcontroller and that would trigger your auto clutch to go to the zero position so that when we are in neutral, our wheels will no longer be connected to the engine. So that concludes the transmission tutorial. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. If you have any questions, please put it down below in the comments. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next Stormworks Basics tutorial.